ever figure that out. Um, Kim Choi. Jacob Solomon. Are you a person? Are you a board member? Are you? I am a person. I just All right. All right. We have a committee of 16, but there's only three of us here, or four of us here Lisa, Gina, and uh, Roger, and myself. Um, we haven't had a committee meeting in forever, and I'm sure the committee is going to be reconstituted now that there's some new community board members. Um, the committee, as I have it on a list that's 2 years old, um, and if anybody knows differently, let me know. Um, I've been, I am the chair. I'm Tom Burrows. Gina Argent, I'm sorry, um, Lisa Bomonti has been the co-chair. She's there in her car. You're seeing the top of her head. There she is. <laughs> um, Gina Argento's on the committee, Bogdan Bakarowski, Gina Barros, who is here, um, Teresa Cianciata, uh, Giovanni D'Amato, Arthur Dibanowski, Moish Indig, Bozina Kaminsky, um, Yol Landau, Maria Lianza, Yolo, and Maria Vieira. Um, two P extra people, other people were on the committee, um, but they're now off the board. Abram Katz and uh, Dana Racklin were on the committee before. Um, so we're not, I don't think we're voting on anything tonight. Um, whoops, another committee member showed up, Maria Vieira. Hi, Maria. Hey, Tom, sorry, it took me forever to log in. Okay. Uh, Tom, I showed up also, Gina Argento. I see ya, I see ya. I have to, I have to search through my boxes to see who's here. Um, let's see, anybody else that's I'm missing? All right, so for the newcomers who just arrived, we have from the 9-4 precinct, Deputy Inspector Faye is here. Um, from PSA 3, we have um, Lieutenant Demanda and NCO Aslam and Ramos. From the 9 0, we have the Executive Officer Captain Joe Wernersbach. Um, the Fire Department, we have Sandra Sanchez, who is Fire Department Community Affairs. Um, and then Tony Herbert, who's the Brooklyn Borough something, or I didn't get the Brooklyn Borough for the Mayor's Community Affairs Office. Brooklyn Borough Director. Okay. I knew it was some kind of fancy title, but I didn't get it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. So um, it's 20 to 7. So I don't know where the rest of my committee is, but like I said, we haven't met in a while. Um, Gina Barros is on my committee and a number of other committees because she, like I, has no live. Um, but she's also a part of the, she's the Capital Budget Committee. And I want to hear what's happening. We would like to hear what's happening with our public safety, particularly police and fire. But then if there's particular pressing budget issues floating around out there, we might want to hear about them and then see whether we want to add it to Gina's collection of budget items. Correct, Gina? All right, Gina, you're not, we can't hear you. I think I agree. I think that we should review what to add on to our budget items now, because at this point we have um, we do have a, one item that's part of the um, safety committee, and that's the increase for staffing of outreach programs such as uh, mental health, drug abuse, um, testing for COVID nineteen, other infectious diseases, and funding was told was not available at this time, but it is recommended and it's a preliminary budget. So I believe we could still look at what we can add to the um, budget statement. At this right, so they, they came to a budget yesterday, but um, you yes. know, there's, there's always ways to play. Um, since the, the inspector Fahey was the first person here, 
perhaps she, she can give us what's happening in the ninth floor, what's coming up in the ninth floor, and what desperate needs do you have? Okay. Sure. Good evening, everybody. Uh, you know, basically, uh, year to date, the ninth floor is up about 40% in index crimes, uh, driven primarily by property crimes, grand larcenies, and burglaries. But we have seen an uncharacteristic spike in robberies as well. Uh, a lot of these earlier in the year were attributed to the smoke shops. Um, you know, you have businesses positioning themselves in anticipation of marijuana licenses being issued. So uh, we've seen the conversion of many of these deli and groceries into smoke shops. Um, and as such, we've seen an increase in, um, you know, robberies or surrounding these areas as well. So. Um, how, does, like, how does one and two go together? They, you, you, you add a bunch of bongs to your window and you get robbed. Well, I think, you know, the idea is that, um, you know, there's an understanding that there's cash in these establishments. A lot of them are owned, you know, owned and operated by immigrants. Um, so we did a lot of outreach amongst the smoke shops to ensure that the business owners understood, um, you know, what, what was going on and that they, we encouraged them to call the police instead of waiting to get robbed if they saw somebody suspicious, because a lot of them had seen suspicious characters. Um, you know, so we just had one recently. We had a spate of them earlier in the year in February, but we had a lot of arrests. Um, you know, the officers in the 9-4, like the 9-0 and, and PSA-3, all the officers are highly engaged. Um, our arrests are up almost 111%. So, you know, we are seeing uh repeat offenders that we're arresting over and over again especially when it comes to um, like the pharmacy robberies the chain store robberies many of these people we have one individual we arrest the 9-4 alone arrested him 13 times uh in 2022 so um you know we're, we're not seeing these cases uh be presented in a, in a timely fashion we're not seeing any type of um outcome that would make it a sufficient deterrent for people not to commit these crimes again. Now, the, the, the converting the anticipation of marijuana sales, I don't, the, I don't think the delis are anticipating to be selling marijuana. We have some intel that, you know, that they, they may actually be selling now with the vape pens and things like that. Um, you know, anything that we get, we, we work in conjunction with narcotics, but as you know, possession is legal. Um, you know, that's still an area. Obviously, the focus is on, uh, the, you know, the illegal drug. So now that this is. Legal and, and enforcement is relaxed around it. I think you have, um, people trying to position themselves that if there are licenses that are given out, whether or not, you know, that remains to be, you know, that comes to fruition, um, I think that's the expectation that people are trying to position themselves so that they, they would be able to sell it legally at some point. All right, well, the Cannabis Control Board is taking forever in developing their regulations, um, but they are believe are gonna be coming to the municipalities, quote unquote, similar to the SLA for review of applications. So the municipality is of course, Community board 1 that they will be coming to with the dispensary applications. So. I don't know where that's going to end up. Which, which committee is going to have that fun in games, but keep track of those places that may be selling illegally. So that when they start lining up at the door to get their. Dispensary license, we have a history of. Yeah, People absolutely. Work. No, we have a whole, um, we, we've created a list of these places and who we've done outreach to, uh, you know, we wanted to explain. To many of these people, they may not, they may hear that marijuana is legal. Some of these owners and operators and think that it's legal for them to sell. So we had to make it clear that it's not legal at this point. Um, you know, and that, that was uh, part of the outreach as well. You know, we also recently, we've had some inquiries, um, concerning the, the psychedelic mushrooms and sales of psychedelic mushrooms. Um, we've seen at the Greenpoint market, I guess there was a vendor selling. So um, my understanding is uh, they, there was legislation introduced in December um, to, to make 
these psychedelic mushrooms legal for the treatment of PTSD, anxiety, and depression? I guess John Hopkins has a study. Um, you know, so that legislation hasn't been passed, uh, but I just wanted you to be aware of that as well. Okay. Um, a more mundane subject. How are our um, catalytic converters doing? Uh, you know, right now we're we're okay, but it, it certainly is a uh, a big piece of the grand larceny um, crime problem throughout the city. Uh, where from where I'm sitting, it kind of ebbs and flows. We'll have a um, a rash of them, and then they'll you know they'll abate for a few months, and then they'll um, they'll um, increase again. We we do have numerous persons of interest again who we've arrested numerous times uh i don't know if we spoke about this but part of the problem is that it's an unserialized part um you know they can get a decent amount of money for it and um at this point in time it's not illegal for some you know the shops can buy this from they can you know buy this part with really just an identification there's no um the the owners of these shops that are that are buying the part, there's no expectation that they have to really do any type of deep digging to see if this is a you know that that person was the owner of the part or not. So they get an ID. It could be a fake ID for all they know, and you know that's a big part of the problem as well. So on the back end, um, we're not having great success in um, getting problematic areas because they we go to see their books and they have an ID and their obligation has been met under the law. And since we're on the people who buy parts, can you tell me if you can about the, the location that's next to Staples and they're using the Staples parking lot to store all their wrecked cars and their wreckers and tow trucks and and they're parked all over the street and you take your life in your hand trying to come out of that parking lot. What what's going on over there? So we have, a, you know, several of the businesses that work with car repair. Uh, you know, we, we, we have 3, 1, 1's that surrounds many of these places on McGinnis Boulevard, the taxis and things like that. Um, that particular location, you know, I, I, I'm not aware that there there's a big problem, but I'm certainly. You know, we can go in and speak to the owners. We try to, you know, obviously it's a balance. We want people to be able to do business in the city. Um, you know, spaces at a premium. So, you know, we also want them to be respectful of the neighborhood and be good actors. You know, in in, in my experience, we generally have success when we go and speak to the owners, the managers, not just an employee there. You know, we get it to the higher levels so that they understand the problem. Uh, but you know, I'm happy to to send Sergeant Frangados myself. We can go over. It just it just seems it gets out of control sometimes, and it's like there's tow trucks and wrecked cars and oil being spilled, and you know, it just seems they took over the whole street and that parking lot. So it just, you know, yeah. And another question of public use of public land for businesses. I get it. There's not a lot of space in the universe, but the sergeant, whatever it is, park. By the ramp to the BQE, is that yours? Uh, yes, the Sergeant William Doherty Park over there. Yes. Yes. The charter buses parked in the traffic lane. Uh. There's a charter company who stores six charter buses, and there there's no parking lane. They park right in the traffic lane, and to go onto Cherry Street, you have to drive on the Gore Point. Um, I will take a look over there. We actually had a police involved shooting around that area not that long ago, and I didn't see what you're talking about, but um, we'll, we'll take a look. And, you know, we also have had success over by Masford Avenue. It's like a bus graveyard and, um, you know, we'll, we, when we reach out to the owners and let them know it's a problem, generally it gets you know, corrected fairly quickly. So, you know, I get, I get there's lots of buses parked along streets in Williamsburg, but this, there's, this is like in the traffic lane. It's like not a part, there's no parking lane there. There's a traffic lane. They're parked right in it. And it's the Gore point becomes the road. So it's just, yeah, we have, a little you know, extreme. <laughs> um, Jerry reaches out direct a lot of times and we have a lot of community complaints. So anything that we can get towed and, and, you know, we do get towed, but uh, let me get back to you on this and we'll see if we can get them out of the traffic lane. 
Uh, other committee members have questions for Inspector Faye regarding the 9-4 territory. I think most of you live in the 9-0, yes? Lisa, you live in the 9-4. I'm in the 9-4, yes. You're not, but I got No, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> I hear them. Oh my God. All right. Any other committee co people have questions for the inspector? Um, Gina, do you want to ask about budget items? Um, <clears throat> well, I would. Oh, Gina's, Gina's coming to us with capital budget issue. So I figured the precincts can, you know, if there's a wall falling down, the roof is collapsing, the windows all fell out. I don't, we don't know what's going on over there. So Gina's soliciting capital budget. So I would like to hear from, from the, um, from the precinct. Yeah, yeah off the top of my head, I don't, uh, uh, I, I don't have anything, you know, obviously more cameras, um, you know, I see quality cameras are very helpful. Um, are you speaking of security cameras for locations or the building? No, for the, the building, we have, you know, we have cameras all in throughout the precincts and around outside. I'm talking more, you know, in problematic areas, we can, you know, definitely probably do some, uh, again, like Manhattan Avenue where we've had increase in robbery, like ID quality, you know, you get to, when, when we go to investigate a lot of these crimes, you get, you know, the, the cameras for the businesses aren't working, you know, the best cameras sometimes we have are the, the city cameras and the ones that are installed, um, you know, that we can make sure they're working. A lot of times we're at the mercy of the particular businesses that may or may not have the security cameras functioning. You mean like Squid Game cameras? But you know. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> Are we, do we have any in the nine four? Yeah, we do have Argus cameras, sure, like by Cooper Park, and you know. But obviously, you know, historically, luckily, the nine four hasn't been a big driver of crime. So, um, you know, it, the cameras are placed where there's a higher higher need. Okay, well, keep us posted. I mean, if there's something, let us know. All right. Yeah, I, I'll definitely um, get back to you. But, you know, even these, when you talk about cameras, it's not just for the most violent crimes when we have leaving the scene, you know, anything that we can, even some of the lower level crime um, that, you know, people get hurt and leaving the scene um, accidents and things like that, they can be very helpful. Um, was there some kind of a Sex crime on the corner of Graham and um, Metropolitan this afternoon. Uh, Inspector, because Special Victims was in the new cor the corner store there. Special Victims was in there. It's like you know, were they just going for lunch or were they investigating? <laughs> I am not aware of any crime that happened. Uh, they could have been following up on a previous crime. Um, we did have a a crime that occurred. Um, in the subway last week. Um, I think, uh, yeah, we had, I suspect it was related to the subway because they were right at the top of the subway stairs. So, so they could have um, been doing, you know, per the investigation, we had a woman that was assaulted um, on on the train. So, you know, I can, I can get you more details if you need it, but I would imagine they were doing a follow-up investigation, camera canvas, maybe for the uh, perpetrator. Okay. All right. Let's move on the next two show. Uh, anybody else have anything for Inspector Faye? Okay, so now PSA three, um, Lieutenant Amanda and two NCOs were with us. Um, who wants to give us an update overview and whatever? See, I see you're still there, but are you not listening? Hey, Lieutenant Amanda, can you repeat Hi. that? Yes. Oh, okay. So we just we inquired regarding what's what's new and exciting in PSA three. Any what's the crime situation? Um, and then again, um, we're looking to what kind of capital needs there are. You just heard what uh, Inspector yep. Faye talked about Argus cameras, things like that. So um, if you could let us know what's happening in PSA three, and then committee members might have questions, and then if there's capital budget needs, you know. 
your office building, your headquarters is falling down, uh, you know. <laughs> no, that so far is good. I mean, if we can get some light towers or something like that, but that might be more of an NYPD issue than from you guys. Um, right, give us an update. It's so far we're doing okay as far as the violence and everything is concerned. There's not much going on right now. We closed out a, uh, we helped close out a uh, burglary pattern. I mean, we're trying to attack quality of life now. That's the big thing with the drinking and the music playing and all that. But other than that, I mean, it's well, we went through much. a lot of shootings last year. How's how are we up to you know January to June? How are we? We're doing very well with shootings. I don't want to jinx it, but so far, I mean, the last two months, I don't believe we only had the one was. Um, like self-inflicted with a friend. And the other one, we arrested the guy as soon as he did the shooting. We arrested him with the firearm. Okay. But uh, yeah, other than that, we're doing okay. I don't want to jinx it, but yeah. What kind of intervention are you doing? I mean, who are you working with to work with the young people, stuff like that? Well, we got the, uh, the NCOs and the YCOs, actually. They're both working on stuff with the, with the kids. And now we're actually... I think next week they're going to do a uh, active shooter plan with the community centers, just in case for the children. Same thing, you know what happened in Texas. So that's where they're going with that. Uh, so you're doing like an active shooter in the different um, housing developments. Yes, for the community centers and the, um, the children's children's center. Okay, and then um, what is it? The WIC is the the WIC working with Bushwick houses. Um, I believe so. Yes, I gotta get the exact address, but yeah. Well, that's where the action was in the past. So, um, and you know, I know they're going to be doing a bunch of uh, aren't they doing renovations or something at the Williamsburg houses? Is that any concern? Um, not that I know of. I gotta speak. To, I mean, is Peel Ramos still here? Do you show them still here or not? I see Aslam Ramos was here. There, yeah, seven and six are both here. Yeah, they, they should know individually better because I cover five precincts. I try to. So Hi, how you doing? Um, sorry, um, officer Aslam, um, as far as the, the renovation of the Williamsburg house is going, we are getting uh, excessive complaints of uh, kids going into the buildings with marijuana use. So we're addressing that problem along with the uh, YCOs just doing more directed and interior patrols. And uh, last time I was out there when we did stop someone for smoking weed, there's um, 17, 18 year old kids coming over from the high school, 16, 17, 18, and uh, contacted the parents and stuff. So we're just working on focusing on actually just addressing the problem by reaching out to the parents and uh, just talking to the kids as well. Um, that, are that's they coming they from work. Grant Street campus? Yes. So, did you talk to Tommy Torres over there? Is he? I actually, he always yeah, claims he's Tommy the great leader of crime fighting. So, yeah, he he told me he's setting up some basketball league too. That's what we're working on as well. Just re trying to reach to these kids at an earlier age, before they get to that stage where they're involved in drug use. So, um, that's one way we're intervening in their lives. Is just we're starting up a basketball league in July where we're targeting fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. And we're going to be uh, coaching them, just basically having the tournaments and guiding them throughout life as well. And do you work with Grand Street Settlement at the Williamsburg Community Center? Yes, yes. We've actually been going there too, covering the tournaments there as well and various events. Um, and both you and, and uh, let's see, uh, Ramos, you're at the whole territory or like? Which, no, which... Uh, me and officer, my partner is officer Ahmed. Um, he's covering transit today, but um, me and him, we cover the Williamsburg and Bushwick houses. And officer okay. Ramos is over down in Taylor, White, and Independence. Okay. Uh, Ramos, anything happening in your neck of the woods? Good afternoon. This is officer Ramos. So I basically cover uh, Independence, Taylor, White, Williams Plaza, and the Barry Street houses. Um, as of right now, aside from a sporadic barbecue and going on at separate locations, everything is good. Construction is is um is done in all three developments because uh, they're also uh, managed by third party companies. 
Um, aside from that, everything else is it's good, thank God. Um, now, I'll get to this one, we'll wrap it up, but um, I assume you guys do stuff for National Night Out like the two precincts do? Um, we don't, no. Okay, it's just the precincts. So don't. our developments, our community centers are run by El Puente. Oh, great, okay. Yeah. So we do like, uh, they have events, um, I think it's every Friday. Now being that the summer is here and the kids are out of school, I'm not 100% sure exactly what they're going to do, but we used to do every Friday, we take the kids to a uh, rock climbing. Oh, the one in the new, the bank, the dime savings bank building or? Right, yeah. And Maria's like, how does he know where these places are? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys got any capital needs? More light towers, that's what you said, light towers. Um, right, we do need more light towers. Gina, do you know what light towers are? They have a little crank on the side and they crank up the lights and they go up high. Oh, okay. They, they help, there's high crime areas, they can put the light towers up and they blind you as you're driving by, but they make it easier to see what's going on in the, in the areas at night. Um, and they on little trailers and they drag them around. Okay, good. So, uh, all right, good. We need it. We need more cameras and more light towers because we feel like it needs to be it. Um, I'm sure our public won't like that idea because, like I said, they're like Squid Game cameras, but you know, um, I've got Argo cameras all around the building I work in in Jamaica, so you know, like Jamaica Avenue must have an Argos on every corner, so. Uh, any committee members have questions for the PSA police officers? I see a hand raise. Maria. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Um, and thank you, officers. So for particular PSA, um, are the developments planning family day events this year? Because I know, I mean, I think last year they took place, but there was a year that they were suspending them due to the hike in crime. Are you anticipating that those are going to happen this year? And if so, around the same time, I think it's what in August, July, August. Can't remember. I'm blaming I'm everything. Sorry, um, um, yes, um, we're we're going to be hosting family national night out as well in Bushwick houses in August, and family days are going to start up as well. I know the paperwork is still in the process. We don't have exact dates for each development at the time, but once we do. Um, we'll relay the information out. Okay, great. Yeah, if there's and, events, get them to the community board and then they'll let, they'll send it to me and I'll get it out to my committee members and they can let their various people know about it. Cause you know, everything we're doing is virtual. So we're not in a meeting space to hand it out. So we try and if you email it to the board office, they'll get it to us and we'll try and get it out to whomever we can get it to. Uh, definitely will do. Okay. Uh, so then we got, okay. So are we good with PSA three right now? All right. Nod your head. Now 90th precinct. Captain Werner. Werner, Werner, Werner. Hi, Mr. Burroughs. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, it's very nice to meet everybody. Um, I work with, uh, as you guys know, Deputy Inspector Mark Vasquez. I'm the executive officer there. Uh, I've been there about 10 months. Um, and I'll just take you through a couple things going on in Nino. So, uh, year to date, um, we're seeing an increase in total index crime of 41%. That's definitely due to, you know, things are opened up now. Nightlife is in full fledged. Um, driving those numbers is, is grand larcenies. A lot of those grand larcenies want to be from unintended. People are going out to these nightlife locations. They're leaving their bag on their chair. They're going to the bathroom. When they return, their phone's missing or their items are missing. Um, we're also seeing a lot of thefts of, of bicycles and, and property of that nature. Um, a lot of that comes from just uh, city bikes or um, other, other types of bicycles just left along the sidewalks unattended. Um, nightlife locations, recently we've had two incidents where we did SLAs, uh, 600 Metropolitan. Um, was an unintended uh, bag. It was the exact story I just mentioned. 
female uh, goes to the bathroom, leaves their bag, comes back, items are, are missing. And the other location is 17 Meadows, uh, a place called Paper Box. That was more of a 311 complaints, uh, loud music. We see that a lot in the 90. Um, so we responded. We tried to kind of mitigate the situation without having to shut the place down. We saw a security guard that was drinking alcohol. We asked that security guard for his security guard license. He became hostile, refused to give it to us. And unfortunately, when we went to issue him a, a summons, he was uncooperative and he, and he fought with us. So we wound up, uh, a sergeant got hurt in that, unfortunately, but we wound up making an arrest out of that location. As far as violence goes, uh, for the year, we've had four non-fatal shootings. Um, but outstanding, just outstanding work by the public safety teams in the 90. They had 52 gun arrests for the year. Up until recently, I believe they were number three in the borough, next to the 73 and 75, which is some very heavy violent commands. I think we might be number four now in the borough. But um, that's just great work. We have two public safety teams that we deploy. One does uh, 8 to 4.30 in the morning with Monday and Tuesday off, so it's weekend coverage. The other, the other team does a 1 to 9.30, so they're all Saturday, Sunday. Um, and between the two teams and our NCO teams, they're just, uh, they're just out there doing a good job with violence. Um, some of these grand losses that we've had, a lot of the unattendants come from cars and from, and from persons as well. What we try to do is we try to get it out to the community the best that we can possibly get it out to them not to leave their stuff around, um, not to leave stuff in, in vehicles. And, um, and you know, we're gonna continue to work on that. A big problem we have in a 9-0 um, with vehicles. We have a lot of vehicles that do drag racing um, down by Domino Park in the south side, the sector Adam, and by um, Metropolitan and Vandervoort in sector David. Um, what we, we, try to, we try to do joint operations with highway, uh, with our NCO teams, um, but it's very difficult because obviously we, we're concerned about the safety of the motorists. We're concerned about the safety of any pedestrians in the area. But it's an ongoing issue that we have. Uh, last year, we did an outstanding job with seizures of some of these illegal, uh, illegal scooters and illegal motorcycles. We had 141 uh, seizures last year. This year so far, we're at 44. So we're on track to, to do just as well as last year, maybe even better. Um, but it's something we're certainly going to keep up with. Aside from, aside from that, you know, with our nightlife, we focus a lot on sector, uh, sector David areas and our sector Adam areas for, because uh, we get a lot of community complaints that come from our nightlife. So that's, a, that's very big for us. Um, and then our sector Charlie, Bushwick houses, we see a little bit more of our violence. We, we do a lot of deployment in that area as well. So, um, so, Captain, um, Captain Joe, I think Captain it's Joe, you're echoing me. You're um, echoing me. Um, some of us on this committee on this who don't committee, have a life don't have also a life. are on the SLA, SLA review, review on committee. The SLA review committee. Okay. And I try to every month send the list to of every new month and renew and licenses, and renew licenses to community affairs. To and community affairs. And the um, the um, the cap the inspector. Inspector, for you to go through to go and through, let us know what the problem spots are, are, um, so that we can, uh, so you know, that we the can owners have to come and meet with us and we can confront them about what it is that's going on. What it is that's going on. Um, you know, and we've been, you know, and we've been doing this for a long time, trying, a long to, get time trying to get the big clubs to somehow fill the void that the city is left of this random. Large clubs, clubs opening in one area, but nobody's ever made a plan for nightlife districts. So they're fixing their own stop signs, they're fixing their own street lights, they're patching their sidewalks. You guys have to go over and work out with their security team. Um, but the SLA committee is a hard working committee. There's, part, you know, there's people not working with you, just let us know because the SLA. No, those that we are really fair, but we will go after people when they're being assholes. And yeah, the SLA will say to them, you need to get the community board on your side if you're not doing what they like to do. And we've always had a great relation with the 9 where we get a community complaint 
where we get the community affairs complaint. goes over, talks to them, over, they talks ignore to them, them, then ignore somebody them, else then goes over. Somebody else goes over. Then, then there's the whole issue of a march <laughs> operation. We just like this stepwise, but we're always willing to work with you. We're always willing to work with you. Get that there's nightlife, but we'd like it to be safe. We'd like it to be safe. The tourists want to go there and want to go there and alive. Alive. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, we've definitely had the same. We've had that experience with uh, anything with SLA. You know, I don't know of any issues. I know that me and uh, Deputy Inspector Vasquez speak about it, and we sit down with Kenny Melendez and Kenny Dubois from Community Affairs, who you know the two are hard working. They are excellent. They they do have the phone number and contact information of the majority of these nightlife owners. Um, they're very they form very good relationships with them. So a lot of times our issues can really, we work hand to hand with the bar owners and uh, we've seen great success with that. Um, any, any locations that want to become a problematic, we're absolutely going to pass that information along to, to the SLA team and, and let you guys know. And they need to understand that, you know, understand that, you know, phones, phones stealing one phone is a film because the, the value of the phone. You know, and people hanging you know, their purse on the back of the stool the when they go to the ladies' room, and there's ladies somebody just breezes by and takes a phone. And there's, there's a felony there's larceny, there's larceny, there's larceny there's in your bar. In your bar. Yep. You get three of them. A flag goes up, and, flag. <laughs> and you guys go. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yep. And we have credit card thefts as well. So the credit cards really drive us uh, with thefts from from banks. So cell phones, credit cards. Uh, from an investigative standpoint, the credit cards can be useful. If they don't cancel the credit card, we can maybe track them a little bit. Um, you know, I don't know how much success we've had with it because people, you know, their first reaction is they cancel the cards right away. Um, but yep, and tracking cell phones. We had, a, we had a pickpocket crew that was working out of um, one of the nightlife locations. And uh, the cops went in, they did some, uh, they did some operations where they dressed in plain clothes and they kind of mingled in with the crowd. Are we able to identify um, that team and uh, place a few of them under arrest? So that that helps us a lot. Okay. Anybody in the committee okay. have questions the for the night owl? Gina. Gina. Three. Three. Yeah, I um. Yeah, I um. Yeah. I think that Brea, the, you're I muted. Think that Brea, you're muted. I'm, I'm unmuted. I'm, I'm unmuted. No, Gina, you're unmuted, but Maria's not. 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 I have not I have not quite seen any seen any complaints of cars and cars and other concerns that concerns that pretty good. <laughs> You're muted, Tom. You're muted, Tom. I'm trying to figure out where that echo is coming from. Um, um, Nine zero. Any <laughs> budget? Any budget <laughs> things you're not getting? Things you're not getting? Uh, not that I know of. I mean, listen, we could all always use more money, obviously. Um, but to my knowledge, no. I mean, I can certainly confer with Deputy Inspector Vasquez just to double check. Um, okay. and we can reach. We can okay. reach back out to you, but not that I'm aware aware of. Okay. Very good. Okay. Very good. Uh, Bozina. Uh, Bozina. Were you here when Inspector uh, Fahey uh, was here? he was here. Bozina Kaminsky. Bozina Kaminsky. Okay. Okay. She, where'd she go? Where'd she go? All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So let's hear from the fire department. From the fire department. Sandra Sanchez. Hello. 
Good evening, everyone. Sandra Sanchez, FDNY Community Affairs. Just want to share with you our uh, summer fire safety tips. We'll begin with the fun one as the weather, uh, the warm weather is upon us. Should you want a sprinkler cap, uh, you can go to your nearest firehouse station and um, just, uh, I would say about a week and a half, two weeks in advance. Um, and um, request one, you have to be 18 or older, have some form of uh, picture ID, and we will be able to, once you provide us with a location, start time, and time, we will then be able to actually come to your block party and install um, the sprinkler cap and then come back and grab the sprinkler cap. We no longer distribute the sprinkler cap um, and leave it uh, to uh, the neighbor's whim to kind of figure it out and not seal back that hydrant. Um, as it should be. Also want to bring to your attention as again, warmer weather. Um, we have just seen um, a rash of, 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 of over overheated extension cords. In the winter, it's because of space heaters. In the summer, it is because of air conditioners. We wanna remind everyone as uh, anything, no matter what the manufacturer says, um, anything that is heating or cooling, one is not meant to run 24 seven. Uh, no appliance is meant to be operational 24 uh, seven with heating and cooling. So we remind everyone to turn, to take some time uh, to certainly turn it off. If you are not home, I know you wanna walk in to a cool home, uh, but to, to turn that off, give it a rest and also to plug it directly into the wall and not into an extension cord because of the amount of power uh, that it draws out. If you're even to touch the extension cord, it would be hot to the touch um, after those appliances are left running for a long time. Uh, thirdly, uh, fireworks continue to be illegal in NYC. Um, I say this because I know um, that my ears tell me something different at night, um, but uh, in the past, Mayor, in the past, the mayor did have a illegal um, task force for fireworks. I'm not sure it is not. Uh, I'm not sure if we will be having a legal task force uh, this year. But nevertheless, our marshals continue to work and to investigate. If you believe um, that uh, you have a neighbor that uh, their their uh, part time uh, job uh, may be selling. Uh, fireworks, most definitely we ask that uh, you call uh, 311, number one, to complain about the fireworks because this allows, 311 is a great tracking system and allows um, us city agencies to know what are the issues that are affecting the quality of life of all our neighbors. And number two, um, it will um, alert our uh, marshals if you may complain that, you know, there is the storage, there's storage and um, you believe uh, that it, it's 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 a safe haven for all things of fireworks. Lastly, lithium ion batteries that has been um, uh, that has just been a new cause of fire within the fire department between uh, last year and this these six months of this year, the lithium ion battery fires have doubled just with the six months of all of last year. So we wanna, we wanna keep in mind that lithium ion, lithium ion batteries, just like any other appliance, are not meant, are not meant to be charging uh, 24-7. Um, also, while these, while these batteries are charging, and we're seeing lithium ion batteries, even our phones have lithium ion batteries, laptops have lithium ion batteries, uh, things that we use every single day, but we're thinking more of the e what we've been seeing is more of the e-bikes and scooters, and we recommend everyone only use the charging cord that came with the actual appliance. In the world, uh, you know, in the Amazon uh, Prime world that we live in, it's very easy to get a cheaper um, offshoot of the actual charging cord. And the reason why it's cheaper is because the actual copper wiring that is in it is not the same. And we do not want uh, you to put your yourself uh, people that may be in your home at risk in your entire, in some cases, uh, your entire building or, or, or your residence uh, where you live. 
I'm going to share with you now the statistics uh, for the fires that have occurred in the confines of um, men of I was about to say Manhattan of Brooklyn Community Board One uh, for the month of May. So for structural fires, there were 43 in the month of May. Non-structural, 46. Medical emergencies, 658. For non-medical emergencies, 547. Bringing the grand total of incidents that occurred in the confines of Brooklyn Community Board 1 in the month of May to be 1,299. To put that in perspective, the entire borough of Brooklyn had 15,419 incidents throughout the confines of the community, uh, to, to, within um, all of the entirety of Brooklyn. We do have um, some budget requests. We did have funding requests uh, to the council members that cover your jurisdiction. Allow me just to pull that up on my screen and I'll just go by firehouses because it's easier for us on our end. So Battalion 35, Engine 216, Ladder 108, that's housed at 187 Union Street. Um, we uh, made a capital request for roof repair and that comes in at about 1.2 million for the entire- so Sandra, Sandra, I'm never going to be able to get all this written down. Neither is uh, Gina. Fret <laughs> not. I know I'm at New York City speed. I, I will send it to the email. So I was going to say, if you have flyers on those four areas yes. that you mentioned, and then the budget list, so then we can look at it and share it with each other and like discuss it. Cause right now I'd be overwhelmed by it. <laughs> well, you, you don't have meetings often. So I've compiled all I know, the I know. together. <laughs> um, I, but that's not a problem. I most certainly can email it. If you can share in the chat, cause I don't believe that I have your direct email. If you can oh, share. No, but you're not getting my direct. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Then as long as you don't mind it going to the, the, Brooklyn, community. the community board, but say you want it to go to the public safety committee. And if don't you're worry, fine with that, the that's email fine. will come to me. Let me tell you. And Gina and the, yeah, we'll get it. Okay, <laughs> They'll send it to the whole committee. I'll bring it. I will bring it to uh, your attention. And thank you for having me. There's only two staff people in the community board office. So if they can route emails out to us, they go right out. <laughs> Will do. <laughs> but uh, the local firehouses, if you could make it clear to them that if there's issues that they want to talk to us about on the sly, um, we used to have a, a firefighter from the house over here who was a non board member of the committee. And he was really good letting us know, like, boots on the ground, what's going on. Uh, with the fire department and EMT and stuff like that. He wasn't giving away secrets. He just sort of gave us a flavor of what was happening. Like when they were putting in the open, you know, the, the neck open. downs, they were doing the neck downs on a lot of streets and those yes. crazy little, here's a park bench and you can move it when the fire truck comes through and he'd give us like, no, that doesn't happen. The fire truck's not going through. If it's going to go through the bench is going with it. Um, you know, <laughs> And that is needed. Um, so with, with everything that has happened with uh, uh, New York City streets during the pandemic, uh, DOT and ourselves have, the, have become, um, uh, I, I would say, we have a more intimate relationship. Uh, I was going to say. <laughs> certainly, uh, certainly what you have shared uh, within, within uh, the confines of uh, Community Board 1 uh, is all, it's all over um, the city and, and I'm sure we want to get to you as quickly as possible and I'm sure whomever has called us wants us to be there as quickly as possible. But we're very um, mindful of that and now we're talking, but prior to um, open streets uh, being approved um, and, and trust me when I say this, every week in the summer, there's like an updated meeting that I have to be on <laughs> about, about open streets and making sure that the uh, firehouse, the the firehouses, EMS stations in the area um, have um, 
have seen what it looks like in re in, in real life and real time. I say that because um, DOT in true fashion operates uh, under the premise that every New York City, you know, every New York City resident abides by New York City um, law. And if that were true, double parking would be a figment of our imagination and we'd read about it in books. Um, but that is not the case. Um, so uh, in real time, and also if there's anything that you may see that you want to bring us to bring to our attention, it's certainly a two-way street and we welcome that conversation. All right. All right. Well, Sandra, when you send us the budget list, send us your contact information because uh, I know Gino will want to say, what? Huh? What? How much you want? Where's you really need that roof? You know, what's like? How big a hole is it? You know. So our firehouses, <laughs> um, average, average. You know, we're up there. We have firehouses that are over a hundred years old. So are the we're still missing a firehouse on the west side? You know, we built all those towers on the waterfront, and we never got our firehouse back. So I don't know. You ever gonna plan one? We got like thirty thousand residents on the waterfront. We never got a new firehouse. So. You have included that in the budget every single year. I would not <laughs> deter you to not include it again in this one. We're gonna have a beach though. We're gonna have <laughs> <in> the beach. <laughs> That's priority number one on the on the budget list, so it's there. All right. Anybody? Oh wait, Bozina, you raised your hand. Bozina, I see your hand up. Bozina. Uh, hi Tom. Hi Tom. I have a problem with connection. I have here heard you every, everybody that spoke but i don't see myself and i'm i I'm, see you 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 can you can see me because i i was not able to speak when you called me the, well the, now you're the there and your hand when you you raised your hand it yes, came like a yes. big floating hand and it was very yeah, obvious okay. to me that your All hand right. went okay. up okay so. i just want to make sure that you see me <laughs> okay sorry about that but i was wondering if you had any questions for um inspector Faye, cuz you know no, you, no, you, no, you no, don't I you belong to the the Polish twist. presidents. Yes, uh, actually, she uh, uh, she pointed out all those things which are our concern, and um, I'm also uh, very very happy that uh, those homeless people on Greenpoint Avenue that that is being dealt with. It's not as uh, uh, you know difficult as it was uh, during the the winter time. Uh, so maybe they they change locations, but but Maria, it's I need my apartment swept. That's my son. That only happens once or twice a year. I got to take it. <laughs> Sorry, Buzina. <laughs> Sorry, Buzina. Sorry. Oh, there's your hand again. Sorry. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm 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 lowering my hand. I like the way. And I just want to um. I just want to credit, you know, Mayor Adams really, um, you know, his push with um, cleaning up the homeless. You know, obviously we we had particular challenges in the nine four. Uh, we have a very activist community surrounded surrounding the homeless community and helping them. Uh, but it really was an unsafe condition. So, you know, you really can thank the mayor for prioritizing that for giving us the full support that we needed to hopefully move these individuals. Uh, closer to some stability so that they can uh, get assisted. So thank you, Bozina. And, uh, you know, we continue the cleanups happen weekly. We actually have another one tomorrow and, um, you know, we have continued attention on that. Okay, so all of my public safety employees of the city of New York, um, just so you know, the committee that this group is on is the catch all for everything. It's called Public Safety and Human Services, NYPD, FDNY, Shelter, Social Services, Aging, Disability, Health. Um, so you could bring all those issues to this committee as well if they come up. Okay. <laughs> and I and I think I missed a few like hospitals and you know, I'm it's all wrapped up in this big bag somehow. So and we're hopefully getting it under control. So um, how are our, um, I haven't seen a cab meeting in a hundred years at either the, the family shelter or the men's assessment center. Have anybody from the precinct been invited to those cab meetings? No, we haven't. Yeah, because the last time I was able to get on top of it, they had names from the precinct that no longer work in the precinct anymore. I don't know, uh, Captain Joe, whether there's a number of 
shelters in the 9 0 also? Are there any cab meetings that you guys have been going to? Yeah, not that I'm aware of. I know we have a few shelters. We have, we have a couple that are private, some that are city owned. Um, but, but no, not to my knowledge. All right. Well, if there's any ever issues, Erin Drinkwater is a member of our community board and she worked at HSA for a long time. So she's very informed on the ins and outs of whatever's going on. She doesn't do it anymore, but she was doing it for a while. So if we can be helpful. That'd be great. Okay, uh, committee, anybody have any more questions for the police or the fire department? Because the other thing I had was for us to try and figure out our schedule for the year and how we might divide up the work and what issues we want to focus on, things like that. So anybody have anything else for police and fire? Because then we can excuse them to go back to protect us. Oh my God, turn on your microphone, Maria. Maria, turn your microphone on. Maria, I saw your mouth going. I don't hear you. Does anybody else hear Maria? Maria, can your can your son fix your computer? Gina, do you need anything else? No, it's good. Gina, uh, Gina, how are things in your neck of the woods? How's um, trailers and security and uh, street closing and stuff like that? How's it all going? This is on um, Gina Argento or? Yeah, Gina Argento. Cause, uh, Gina Argento. I know she's there. Because Maria is still trying to get her microphone to work. She wants to say something, but she can't. All right, I think we've done it with the police and fire. I thank you all for coming. Um, we're going to try and work out a regular schedule. We used to try to do them quarterly. Um, and maybe I'll get brave. Maybe you'll go outside for your meeting so I won't be surrounded by a room full of people without masks on. Um, and come back to precinct council, but let us know what the precinct council is bringing up too. If there's anything that comes up at precinct council meetings that you think the community board should be aware of, let us know. Um, you know, because we got our transportation committee. You know, Eric Brzezidis is on top of a lot of the transportation issues, and we're trying to keep on top of the safety issues and shelter issues and things like that. So always let us know so we can you know get the board to support you and. Let us know the problem bars and entertainment venues so we can speak to them. We work with the bar. We try to get the bar owners to talk to bar owners uh, first saying, you know, you screw up. You're going to screw it up for the rest of us. So, you know, clean up your act. Um, and then if they come see us, we'll say, you don't clean up your act. We're going to tell the SLA to not give you a license. So feel free to just let us know. Okay. You know, I have you on speed dial, Tom. <laughs> I have the most interesting people on my speed dials. <laughs> Today, all day long, Esperanza was getting because you know I, I on my other hat is to deal with the kids that you guys arrest, and I'm the one who's like getting them to be released. So, up <laughs> oh, there she is, Gina Argento. I see your face. I was having issues with the audio. I just want to thank you for all your hard work with, with uh, keeping us all safe. Thank you for bringing everyone together. Do you have any questions for any of the fire, the police, or any concerns or notable things we should buy them? Gifts, uh, light nothing, poles, uh Nothing today. I know you want to have a gated street for your your um, your studio complex, but that's not on my. I can't do that. Um, <laughs> I do that. I want to put that arch over it that says your name on it. So I'm going to put your name at the bottom of it. <laughs> The rocks to be thrown at. All right, anybody? Everybody's good. Gina Barros, you got any? I'm fine. It's good. I, All right. It was a good presentation. And Maria, we're giving up on you. Your microphone doesn't work. I lost audio for a minute. I had to jump out and come back in. All right. So, did you have anything you needed to ask the police or the fire department? 
No, not necessarily. You you asked my question. You know, my husband's catalytic converter was stolen two weeks ago. <laughs> on why things, I'm laughing, but you asked a question. You know, All I mean, right. what's going on? But it's it, I, I I got the answer. I try to anticipate. <laughs> and and that that was in the nine zero, not the nine four. I, I I will tell you, um, auto crime. We work with auto crime. They they have a uh, a program where they do etching. They, they've given us some kits so that we can etch a serial number onto your catalytic converter. Um, so if you want to set that up, you know, they were limited. That might be um, a, a funding item, but I can check with auto crime. Uh, basically, it burns a serial number onto the part and then you register the part with the database. Another problem we have with it real quick is that we might come upon somebody that has three of these on the street. You know, we stop them. They look suspicious. In the middle of the night, we don't know who this belongs to, right? So we don't have a complainant really. It's kind of like a victimless crime. So what this etching does then, it gives us a name at a database that we can see who belongs to this part, even if it's 3 a.m. So now we have probable cause to make the arrest because we know he's not the owner. Uh, we have a contact information for the owner. So um, I do have some kits. You know, uh, we might have like 10 left because the NCOs were etching some of these parts. Um, but I know when I spoke to the detective in auto crime, there weren't, you know, they weren't flush with these kits. This was something that he got from going to a conference in Germany where they're also having this problem. It's like a international problem. Um, so if we can get more kits, you know, uh, I, I did speak with assembly member Gallagher about asking for legislation to have this part serialized. So while we're waiting on that, you know, it gives you a sticker that you can put in the window um, that hopefully the criminal will say, I'll, I'll move on to one that may not be serialized. Um, you know, so we can maybe, uh, I'll see how many we have on hand, but if that's something, you know, um, we could even get funding for, that might be an item you want to consider. Great. Okay. Everything's popping. All right. Thank well, thank you, my public safety people. Um, I just want to meet with my committee and any public members right now to figure out where we're going to go forward. Thanks very um, much, and have a good night, everybody. The nine zero is still the second, the second Wednesday of the second night. The nine four is still the first Wednesday of the night. PSA three is also the first Wednesday of the month. Lieutenant and COs. Lieutenant Demanda. Yes, sir. Say it again. The community, your your precinct council meetings, like the nine four is the first Wednesday of the month. The nine zero is the second Wednesday of the month. I think you guys were one of the Wednesdays overlapping one of the precincts. So, what is your monthly community council the precinct council meeting? I'm gonna put you with as Islam. Hold on one it's, second. So, um, first Wednesday of each month. Right, and you're still doing them virtual, like at five. Yes. Okay. Because I used to be able to go to two at once because they were both virtual. Okay. All right. So I'll make a note of that. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Thank All right, you. committee. Have a good don't day. leave committee. All right, committee. Good night. Nice to meet you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Committee, we try. We try. We're supposed to do four meetings, do four meetings a year, but with COVID, we sort of didn't succeed and the fourth meeting I had scheduled last year suddenly a month before since I had booked them a year in advance I was told it was a Jewish holiday and we couldn't have it and I was so frustrated with the calendar I just said can't deal with this um, so is there a night of the week that's better for people or worse for people um, like I said there's 16 people on this committee and I'm suspecting that there's going to be more added um, or changes with the new committee assignments. Oh, we just lost everybody. It's just Gina and Bozina and Maria. And I, okay, well, we'll make, we'll decide for everyone else. That happened. <laughs> Mom, this night works for me if you want to make it like every a quarterly or whatever, however you want to do it, standing meeting. Yeah, because I do, I've made that the public, the SLA committee is always the fourth Tuesday of the month. Um, except one month September, which is always a challenge because there's a million Jewish holidays in September, so it gets moved. And mm -hmm. but the second Tuesday of the month, other than 
this one for some reason or other uh, has been the community board meeting. Um, but this month we moved because we were trying to avoid going public, I think. So do you think Tuesdays are a better day if I get Tuesdays? Because I have to sit down with Joanna and go through the whole calendar thing. Tuesdays, I mean, so. And, it would only, okay. and this would only be quarterly. What, these these would only the, be quarterly. Um, it could work. I, it could work. I just don't know. I'm on from another committees. My call I was, Well, I'll float, so, you know, before I make it down stone, I'll float it past you. The other thing is this committee has got shelter, social services, aging, disability, health, which I assume includes health and hospitals. Um, there's a lot of stuff and it, it would be, I would like to ask like committee members to own one of those areas that like, keep on top of it. So if there's, I'm going to send an email out saying, okay, what area would you want to own to keep aware of what the issues are? And if something has to come to the board that we can discuss it at a meeting, because I have enough keeping on top of all those bar owners. <laughs> no, it's a lot. You know, and I try to make nice with the hospital, you know, because I, I love the hospital. Um, are you on the advisory board or not? Uh, you know, Tom, that's a great question. They had me fill out the form last year. I submitted everything. I've been attending meetings every single, I mean, as if I were a board member. And not only that, they allow me to speak. And Jessica told me, well, actually, you're not officially. I'm like, are you, I mean. Yeah, I know that was like out of the blue, like you're not officially on the committee, but you're there all the time. I'm like, what, what? And they allow me to speak during the, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not during public session. I'm saying regular committee. So I don't know. I, I don't know. It's Simon. It's still, it's Simon. Simon is the rep for CB1. Okay, okay, all right. He's the, EV, the CB1 uh, member of the hospital cab that's, so, that's what i heard i don't even know if he okay. knows though. well maybe you can pin down uh the hospital and say like what's the story because like i'm sort of on this the dycd board but i'm like how did i get on it like what, what does that mean you know and like i'm supposed to know all these youth programs i'm like i just like the only person who'll go to a meeting i don't know all these youth programs it's like how did how did i get on this thing you know, and I do these surveys and we do polling at the, you know, uh, national night out. It just seems there's got to be people who like really want to do it. That would dig into the issues and say to us, we need to discuss this at a committee meeting and get a resolution. As long as you have the enough members, because it seems like it's like pulling teeth to get everyone to get, you know, join a committee meeting. Well, if I can get, I'm going to try and talk to Joanna about getting a regular schedule because, like I told you, it's um, 16 people were on the list and two went off the board. So we're now 14. And I'm sure when um, uh, Dialis gets finished doing the committees, we're going to be 16 again. And it's, they're going to have to come to a meeting and tell us what they're interested in. You know, like John here, John Rossmus, I think he's a member of the public. This again, just something. FYI. Huh? I said, I picked this committee again, FYI. Okay. Yes, and I put on my thing, I'll chair it, but if somebody else wants it, please give it to them. <laughs> so no if somebody's really like, clamoring no to be the chair, like you, raise your Tom. hand. <laughs> no one like you. No one can do it like you, Tom. <laughs> Rosina. Rosina, well, say us something wonderful. Tell us something wonderful. Well, I, I think your idea of um, us uh, taking a, of a part of, of, of the, the item on a committee, it's a good idea. I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm supporting that. I think uh, that would be very helpful, um, you know, for, for the whole committee. So that, and, and it's not going to be overwhelming for, for all of us. So that's, that's a good idea. Right, and when somebody calls me up and you know, because like for a while, Gio, um, Gio um, he would go because he would walk to school every morning under the BQE. 
So he was keeping an eye on the encampments and meeting mm-hmm. with the people at the encampments. And that way I didn't have to get up and go over there and see what was going on. He was able to, to do that. And also um, Gina Bamont, uh, Gina, you know, Lisa Bamonte walked from her house on one side to the restaurant and she could report on, you know, so people who are where things are happening, you know, your neck of the woods, Posina, you know, you got the men's reception center and the- Yes, and seniors also. I, I, I have two senior centers, which are right. uh, within, um, you know, walking distance to where am I here, so, you know, and I have a lot of bars too, <laughs> so. Yes, and are you a member of the mysterious, what I call the 100 Polish presidents? Uh, hundred Polish presidents? No, <laughs> no. That, that, uh, that Arthur and uh, Bogdan go to. Oh, no, like, no, they um, like some secret cabal of Polish men having meetings once a month and smoking their cigars and. Oh yeah, no, no, no. But I know, I know them. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I have Maria's to create. Um, I have to create um, uh, a group of women. Yes. And, and we we will have a glass of wine instead of cigar. <laughs> At one of the bars that opens up. Oh, the the new one on uh, Nassau Street, which is going to be a high end wine bar, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I don't know how that Louis place snuck in under the wire, whatever that sloppy Louis or whatever it is on McGinnis well, and Nassau. I'm still thinking about the Polonaise, you know? This is such an eye, eyesore. Oh, it is an eyesore. Know, what are you going to do with Point that? Avenue. It's still. You know, it doesn't doesn't look good, and it's uh, it's right there by the subway. So that's that's really really awful. You know, uh, sight for us as happen. a community. Well, economic development should try and figure out what we can do do with that, right? Yeah. Other than making it a movie studio. Who's the owner, or where's the owner? I think there's a new new owner. Um, the this property was sold. Uh, I think a few years ago, and they, they started to, uh, you know, renovate it, uh, did some sort of work, uh, then, then they stopped it, and then I think they, they do it again, so we'll see. The, the person who, I believe the story was the person who sold it had really didn't understand the zoning for that site. Yeah. That he could sell it and it'd be some, something wonderfully monstrous could be built there and it's not zoned for something yeah. monstrous. Yeah. So he was hoping to get more money for it than he could because what he thought could be, it's sort of like the guy on, on Graham Avenue, the old stone place. He thought he could build a monstrous building and they're like, uh, no, we're zoned to six stories here. And, and you have a subway, <laughs> you have a subway station, so you can build up, uh, uh, you know, very high in this neighborhood because the subway, a train is going right there by, by um, you know, by the property. You know, like there's the, but the guy with the stone place, he was close to, you know, those weird lots that are along the BQE are outside of the low zoning because they're irregular lots and they're hard to use and hardship, blah, blah, blah. So they're building all those tall towers with people with windows overlooking the BQE. So the stone guy was like a block away and he didn't get that. Yeah, one block made a big difference on zoning and he was all ready to go and, oh, look, I can put a tower up. And like, uh, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I think the Polonaise guy thought, oh, well, this is a big piece of property. They can put a tower here. I'll sell, you know, no. Nope. So you got to know all the land use rules. Yeah, that's true. You know, and then the kids got that property for a while and made it a party space. So I'm sure it's a, to convert it now, it's a wreck. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. So, all right, I will send an email out. I'm going to ask, find out when the committees are going to be established. Once there's a new committee, then I'll send it out. And I'm going to talk to Joanna first and try and set dates for, our, you know, four meetings for the year, so we can sort of plan in advance and then pay attention to what's going on in the community. Mr. Rasmus, you're you're attending. Are you a public member? Like, I don't know you. I'm like. Are you there? Hello? Anybody know who John Rossmus is? Because I was surprised that the person who is no longer here was attending our meeting, um, Roger Capucci. He said he was a public member of our committee. I never had him on my list, so I was like, so, John, are you a public member of our committee? Are you hoping to be a public member of our committee? Or, like, 
John? Doesn't show your microphone shut off. So John, uh, WebEx is killing off people right and left. Wow, John's on there three times and nothing, none of them are speaking. I don't know what's going on. John, you're gonna have to like send us a note or something. I don't know. Oh, there, I heard a noise. I heard Hello. a sound. Hello, everyone. Hi, John. I, Hi, John. I, I, I just wanted to attend a meeting. Um, I just wanted to, I, I wanted to get more of an engagement in my community and I'm attending all the community board meetings and I'm, so you live in board one or work in board one or have an interest in board one? Yes, um, uh, my, my family owns a business over here. Uh, we, we met once uh, during the um, community council meeting pre COVID. You probably oh, okay. don't remember me, but I don't remember anything before COVID. <laughs> so <laughs> Uh, I had no life before COVID. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so you're uh, in the nine four. You're over on the north side, I guess. I'm in the nine four. I attend all the community council meetings. I attended the uh, last one before their summer break now, and so yeah, um, I'm trying I'm to a get chicken. I won't go into a room full of cops without masks on. So, <laughs> uh, well, they say that the vaccine works. So I, I don't know. I guess I'm. I had good luck so far, so I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a protest position for me because I work for legal aid and, you know, it's like, you know, we all had to wear masks. How come you guys don't have to wear masks? You know, it's like a it's sort of like a position kind of thing. But gotcha. I'll get back there. I'll get back there. And they, and as you saw, uh, Deputy Inspector Faye has no problem with texting me at all kinds of weird hours of the day and night. So <laughs> no, she's 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 a very good person. I, I talk. She lets me know. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is our first meeting in a long time. We tried to do quarterly meetings and it sort of fell by the wayside. So I'm trying to get it going again. We just got new appointees on the community board. So they'll be forming new committee structure. But if you want to be a non board member of a committee, after you investigate them all, you can then send a note to chair Fuller to say, I'd like to be a non board member of a committee, because then you can participate in our discussions when we're trying to get resolutions and stuff like that done. So, you know, you're not necessarily on the community board, but you can come to the committee meetings and participate. You know, as you see, I come with an SLA report to the community board meetings and it's sort of. All the work is done in the committee. So, when we used to have a youth and education committee, Esteban Duran and I used to write up resolutions, both them from. Like, the 2 of us would vote for them and take them to the full board. So. A small group on a committee can get a lot of stuff moving. So if you see things that you think them might need community board action, just let us know. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. I'll take up on your offer. I, I attended one of the uh, the SLA meetings uh, two months ago. Brave uh, soul, you were. I, I were. Uh, uh, it was a very interesting start. <laughs> uh, lots of uh, arguing and <laughs> people getting upset at each other, but. <laughs> Well, I most mean, of them are upset at me. Were you at the one where the guy <laughs> left his microphone on while he was cursing me out for 20 minutes? I don't know. Every, everybody was upset. I, it, it no, was but you, would have, you would have remembered that one because we finished with him and we moved on to the next person. He just kept cursing me out for like 20 minutes with his microphone on and everybody's yelling at him, shut your microphone off. And he just kept going on and <laughs> on and on. <laughs> oh, I wish I I wish I attended that one. No, I I, I was the one that complained about good Is that bar. On YouTube, I gotta minutes. watch it. <laughs> <laughs> right, Gina. He just kept like he was cursing me out on the microphone, <laughs> and everybody's like, "Stop!" Stop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we had the one, and then prior to that, was like we had those chats on the side, and we were getting by all the cursing that was going on in the chat. And like, I'm just trying to read the applications, which are 34 pages long. So I'm not even seeing the faces. I'm just reading paperwork. Uh, and they're all yelling and screaming and hollering. And I'm like, uh, line one says such as. <laughs> And then somebody has the nerve said, you should not allow that person to come to meetings anymore. I said, I have no idea who it was. I wasn't paying attention. Like, I don't, there's like a hundred people on the screen. I don't know which one's yelling at me. They don't say, hi, this is Joe Schmo. I'm going to curse you out right now. Like, 
Now, now that it's virtual, everybody comes. That's the it, it's it's mobbed with people all the virtual world. <laughs> and then and then of course we get in trouble because we get a little carried away and we get we get corrected by the you know the teacher. You can't say that. I'm looking forward to the next one on the 21st. <laughs> yeah, well, Rob Lano is no longer on the community board. I re I relied upon him as my attendance taker and a cat herder. And I don't know who's going to herd cats now for me because like I disappear into the paperwork and I was like, Rob, you you recognize the faces because you have been in every bar in Williamsburg. Um, and you know who all the bartenders are and, like he's not on the board anymore. So I'm like, who knows these bars? Because I would just say to Rob, Rob, you know this bar. Oh, yeah, I was there last week. Rob, you know, yeah. I have to... <laughs> well, he knew every bar there is. Yeah, he was very good. Yeah, but he's not on the board anymore. So. <laughs> I have to invite him as a special guest uh, advisor on bars. Yeah, hey, maybe he could just continue on the committee. Just... Well, we'll have to see. I think his wife is going to have to, you know, he got married now, so. <laughs> With children. Yes, her, the sun is cute. All right, thank you, everyone. I appreciate all your work. We'll get this under control somehow. All right, but I think it was great to hear from all of our law enforcement people and uh, what's going on, and that we all work together. You know, I wish the hospital was able to work on that. Oh, thank you. I love those when the hands come up. They come up like they go like this. <laughs> Bozina, I love when you do that. The hand looks like, Wee. all right, we're out of here. Okay. Good night, bye. everybody.